Welcome back everyone. Today we are still in the topic of the geometry of chess as there are many topics to explore. However, these are going to be a little bit more advanced topics. So maybe for intermediate and advanced players will benefit from this video. If you're a beginner, you're still welcome. Feel free to pause the video at any time. And okay, let's get right to it. Okay, interference. We're gonna see from basic to more simple examples. And let's start by defining what interference is. So this is when you place a piece between two of your opponent's pieces, disrupting this line of communication or coordination. It can be two pieces protecting each other on the same file, rank, or diagonal. So in this case, the example is simple. Here we, uh, we see this bishop protecting this knight. Uh, this queen has also so, something to do with this coordination of these three pieces. This queen is protecting the knight. Right, so here we can play f5. But now the queen has to move. Otherwise, it will be lost. So let's say it goes to, it can go queen g5. Queen g5 and now this knight is hanging, we can take. In this one, this is black to play. How do you disrupt the communication of this rook and the bishop? So you have to find the right move, otherwise it will be some kind of perpetual or some windmill where the bishop moves and the rook is, keeps giving you a check. So yeah, the move is knight h3. You are disrupting the communication of these two pieces uh, and now once the rook takes, you take back. And this bishop is also in trouble, they have to move in somewhere. We're going to use this, th this theme of interference to also explain the concept of building a bridge. Building a bridge means using your rook as a shield. Uh, as a shield for your king and, and your pawn. So here we have a pass pawn that we want to promote. The first thing we do, or try to do, is cut off the king. Here we have a check on f4. Once the king moves, let's say, to g5, now we're building this bridge. This bridge uh, interrupts the communication of this pawn and the king, probably. So uh, here, black has to take. Once we take back, uh, we promote the pawn. So yeah, the bridge was, was this rook using it as a shield of this pawn. Feel free to pause the video on this one. It is black to play. And we also want to be aware of the threats. So if we don't find the right move, this is mating one and our king, our queen is also hanging. So yeah, here what we want to do is move this knight out of the way, giving a check. So the right uh, square to do it is e3. So e3 interrupts the, co the connection of these two pieces, the bishop and the queen. Uh, and now this comes with check, right? So the bishop cannot take because the king is in trouble. So the king has to move, and let's say king e2. Um, yeah, so here, okay, yeah, let's, let's say king e2. And now we can take this queen. Okay, so this is why to play. Black just took our rook on h3. And, and now this is why to win, why to play and to win. If you have seen my other videos before, you know that this is a critical diagonal. So this is what we want to do. To interrupt the connection of this bishop with this diagonal okay so my instinct goes okay we just play c6 yeah that is how we start and now once they take back you, you don't want to just promote immediately because if you promote him like if you go here uh they can give up the pawn even and now you are just not being able to promote so that will be a problem what you want to do is Okay, put your king here, and now the bishop can never get in. So the bishop is going to do its best job to retreat and stop the pawn. So we get this pawn out of the way. Okay, what is the what is the continuation? Which is kind of very counterintuitive. Okay, black is going to play bishop b7. Fine. And if you want to, you, are, you were thinking about, okay, I'm going to go king b6. That will be a mistake. Because now uh, black has time to retreat and now you're going to have to waste other two moves to kick it out of the way. And you, you don't you don't really have a chance to promote this pawn. So that, that is very counterintuitive. 
but you have to go king d6 instead of going king b6 you go king d6 because you are also threatening to support this pawn okay so the absolute best move for black is to play king f7 now you have time now you have time to play king c7 king c7 once the bishop goes back uh, you you play again here and now the, there is not many moves for black uh, one move will be c5 right c5 now you can take the bishop and let's say they keep uh, doing this you can promote the pawn in this one we also look for pieces that are coordinating with each other that are supporting each other so in this case what stands out to me is this bishop in coordination with this queen so i wish i could play something like queen e3 that's not possible in this position but there is some other more important connection in the position always look for the king uh, what are the relationships this king has so we have king and queen of the same rank we can exploit that so you can pause the video now yeah the move is bishop d1 yeah which seems like wow this is just nasty because the queen can just take right uh queen just takes on d1 now how do we continue yeah we just give a check this is a common pattern in chess so this is checkmate mm -hmm. we have just cover interference which is getting into the way of one piece we're going to see now double interference which is getting into the way of two pieces this is the Novotny team uh, also known he was the composer he was the composer of this type of problems let's try to figure out what is happening in this position it is why to play we have mating two so i would love to play queen f2 but the rook is preventing me to go here and there is another another mate a possible mate which is going to d4 queen d4 seems very crazy but this this pawn cannot be moved as it is being pinned by this bishop the king is being, by, being pinned by the bishop so now uh, we see the movement of this rook as well as the interference of this bishop so we find our key square in the middle of or in the crossing of these two lines so this is we can play knight b2 if bishop takes we can play queen f2 this is a shocker right this is this is mate and now uh what happens if black takes with the rook now we can play queen d4, queen d4. so yeah this is this cannot this cannot happen again and this is mate okay let's see more examples all right let's check out this one which is also very interesting if we map out what are the uh, squares that are being attacked around the king we have these nine squares so we only have to cover this one and they will be made and what are the key defenders of the position so there are many pieces around maybe we can consider this knight this knight covering these two squares like i, I would love to play uh, queen h3 that's not possible the second uh, there might be some line where this bishop doesn't exist and maybe i can even sacrifice the rook and once they take i play uh, queen g3 so okay this is also a key defender of the position right uh this bishop and this there is something else uh if this bishop didn't exist let's say maybe i can play uh knight to e5 so the second thing i can do is like i'm, I'm gonna try to get rid of this bishop but uh the the problem is if i if i take here then the queen uh, queen covers so that's not that's gonna be too slow then another mate we can find we're only trying to cover this square uh is i can maybe go knight to d2 yeah but this rook is stopping me to do that so i have identified the key defenders of this position which is the bishop and the rook so the bishop is covering all this diagonal and then the rook is covering all of these squares this fine now the crossing of these two lines comes in d6 
okay we know that we have to go to this six and interfere in the middle in the way of these two pieces so now we can play queen d6 if rook takes perfect now we can play knight e5 see how the lines are interrupted and now okay i'm gonna take with the bishop because rook doesn't work if bishop takes now i can play knight e2 then see we have the nine squares cover this is made okay i decided to include cross pins in this video as the, it has similarities in terms of the geometry with the double interference so let's check out what is a pin first a pin is when a piece is unable to move without exposing an attack on a higher value piece so for example it's what to play we can play bishop e3 and this queen cannot be moved uh, otherwise you lose the king that would be illegal like you cannot move uh, you cannot move it so you have to take and now this is winning for white now a cross pin is a little bit more advanced so let's take a look at this example we have bishop to f5 given a check to the king and one of the most sensible moves is to play bishop d3 defending okay so here we go this is the move that uh, kind of paralyzes the position this this bishop cannot be, be moved if we play queen e2 so now this bishop is being attacked in two different directions so uh, if we extend this this pattern it might form a cross right that's that is why it's called a cross pin now if i take this bishop now i can take the queen so yeah and let's say that i want to take the queen which wouldn't be possible in the position now the king is lost so yeah this is in if we check out the geometry of the double interference we saw that this bishop uh, was crossing here and this rook was protecting these uh, all these squares and if we st extend this pattern we might see we might be able to see a cross so that is the geometrical pattern that repeats okay so this one is an interesting story on cross pins we're gonna check one line that also works for white and but it's not a cross pin so we play c6 trying to promote this pawn and then uh, the pawn can just keep uh, advancing but other solution will be for black to try to stop this pawn from promotion right so uh, bishop can play e4 now we this is made by playing c7 yes yeah, so, okay we see bishop b7 stopping this pawn trying to stop this pawn we can offer this, this bishop right because if black takes now we just promote this pawn so uh, the king has to move has to move so he can get away from this check if we promote and, and now we can take this bishop we, we take this bishop on b7 once black, uh, the king takes we can play king d8 and yeah this is just winning for white right if, if they try to promote we this one comes with check now what will be the other solution so this is the cross pin um uh, we get first c6 now b2 right and now c7 we allow this queen to promote it's completely fine because now we can promote with tempo yeah this is check so king has to move king a7 uh, that, now what do we do with white so this is the move we have to go queen c7 uh -huh. we we give a check here and then the king has to move again so we give a check with the bishop and, and now the bishop can defend so okay i hope you see this pattern by now because now we can i even just pointed out what is the square that we need to go queen h7 we can go to queen h7 and if this bishop wants to move uh taking the bishop now the the queen is lost so and if what, what is what be the other solution so if uh, bishop wants to take the queen which is not even a allowed or a legal move then the king is lost so yeah this is just completely completely lost for blank in this one we need two moves uh, we are only going to need two moves to achieve a better position 
uh, it's already a better position but here we take this pawn in the center with the knight uh, we can go knight e4 so once the bishop takes now i hope you see this cross uh, we have a we, we can potentially pin this bishop to the king and and now we can play queen to f5 so queen f5 it seems crazy a bit under uh, counterintuitive but now uh, if bishop takes this king is lost so that cannot happen and if bishop takes then this queen is lost so as you can see here the participants are similar but it can also happen with other pieces so we can do a cross pin or execute a cross pin with any any piece that is that has some uh, vertical or diagonal movement so the queen bishops and rooks uh, the knight is, is harder uh, i mean it, it, it wouldn't happen i mean we can pin a piece but it's not going to be a cross pin so here we can take this bishop uh, in this case, this is one of the most important defenders of the position. So we can take this bishop. O although it wouldn't work if we take it with the queen. We, we have to take it with the rook. So now once the, the rook takes back, um, this queen seems to be in trouble. Uh, feel free to pause the video on this one and try to figure out what will be the best position, the best solution for this puzzle. So hint. You don't have to move the queen. You don't even have to move the queen, which is just nasty. Here you can play rook g8. So, yeah, it looks crazy. But this queen cannot be taken. Because there is a pin to the king. Uh, now, uh, let's say that you play this. You take this rook. You can take the queen. So, yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah okay. This one is also fascinating. And so the first thing we think about in this puzzle is interference. So how can we interfere the communication or the connection between this queen and the bishop? As simple, we can just play e6. e6, it doesn't seem like a good move because we are just plundering the pawn. Uh, but yeah, if, so if this happens, then we can just take the bishop. So the best move in the position is just to take back, uh, is to take with this bishop. Now we can play bishop d4. Bishop d4 threatens to checkmate. So now we're threatening to checkmate here, okay, to defend this mate. Black can play f6. So now we have a pin to the king, okay, we're pinning this bishop. And yeah, this is the move. Uh, the, the move we need to find is queen g4. Queen g4 again seems like what are we doing here? Yeah, you cannot take this queen uh, because this bishop cannot be moved, right? There is a pin. And now uh, you cannot take this bishop or you lose the queen. So, okay, you can say, okay, but black can just play king f7. All right, yeah. And now we can play rook f to e1. So we are attacking this bishop three times and yeah it's just loose it's just completely winning for for white because black doesn't have any good moves like what are you playing here with black yeah it's just it's very difficult i have other video on this topic of cross pins with different examples so check that out comment like and subscribe and i will see you in the next one take care